I was probably one of the first uh, people uh, in the charts, really, to to be totally in the box. You know, mm. my uh, my my first album was completely done in Logic. Well, I mean, they they were all really done completely in Logic. Um, and and you know that was kind of like 2001, you know, 2002. So, um, so I'm kind of I've kind of done things in the reverse, really. Whereas now you you, you know it's just more and more even even kind of like top end producers now are kind of starting to see a few people doing that in the mm. box. Um, and 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 I've kind of gone the opposite way, and and I've kind of gone completely almost out of the box. Um, be because I was, uh, I guess I just really like that kind of, um, I I've always, you know, I I've always kind of liked that kind of American kind of R&B, mm. uh, hip hop sound really. Uh, and, and, and obviously, you know, the, the, the first place you'd really look towards is 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 like a k series you know um but that's really big and very hot actually <laughs> more hot than big you know um so i kind of uh yeah it, i kind of started out uh when um when i noticed that companies like uh funky junk were doing cut down G series, G series is, um, and 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 I think once I mean it's like once once you kind of take that step and go out the box, you, in order to compete with the clarity of plugins, you know the the the, uh, the the kind of the low distortion element side of 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 uh, plugins you have to kind of go big or not at all really you know so so it's been uh it's been quite accelerated really the the, the kind of the uh expansion into the analog realm you know that 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 me and my engineer have made um yeah and, and i you know and it's a and it's a reversal of uh the uh the philosophy but but i think Actually, the, I mean, I don't think anyone would disagree that the the way of working with a console is just a million times faster um, and more human. To keep ourselves inspired, I guess we all need a bit of change. And I think that, you know, if, if I mean, if you're working, you know, if you're working on like an old G series, you know, you've got no you know the the recall isn't you know it isn't the same as a duality you know I mean, duality is the same every time and um and so you know there is a there is a recall you know and it does take a few minutes to set the desk up but you don't have to i, I mean i remember loading up songs you know thinking that the the, the snare was wrong you know, and and just this constant reloading of songs and changing stuff and switching between songs and stuff, which f does feel liberating when you first get it. You know, when or or if you had been working with a desk before. But but what's more liberating for me is that stuff just sounds right. You know, I mean, I really can mix a track in a day and not want to change it, and that never happened in the box with me. You know, stuff took weeks and weeks to mix in the box because it never quite sounded like it had been mixed on a on an SSL. You know, I used to find myself in the box, kind of going, "Oh, the kick doesn't the kick doesn't sound big enough. The snare doesn't sound big enough." You know, um, I'm just fiddling loads. Whereas I don't fiddle now with anything. You know, you just just plug something in, record it, and and it just sounds good. With a desk, you can do uh, more than one thing at one time. That's the answer, really. Is that uh, in in a in a computer, you can only do one thing at a time. And on a desk, what you find is that you you're doing 
everything at the same time you know uh, well on, on this one 24 but obviously the sky's the limit really if you've um, you know if you're a real duality user you know but um, um, you know I, I, I don't you know it's not I don't do like orchestral stuff and actually my music is is very minimal so so I, I actually uh, I would certainly never need more than 48, but but actually 24 is kind of fine, really, you know. And we use the we use the we use all the delay returns as as extra summing, you know, which is great. I start a lot of my I start my songs in Ableton, so really most of the songwriting is done in that. And and I try to uh, I try to to get it as far as I can in Ableton. Um, But then there's also a lot of songs that are started on the piano because I've, I've got the, the piano wired for sound as well. Um, you know, or in there, you know, on the guitar. So I mean, it'll either start in here, but a lot of the time it will start in Ableton because, um, you know, I've kind of done the MPC thing with drums and I, I still just find, I just don't understand why you can't export audio from an MPC, you know, it's just like get you know if they could just export the tracks as WAVs so you could just drop them into your you know you, you have to sync to the MIDI and press play and you know and all that so so I, I, I do all my drums and stuff I do it in Ableton because it's just such a fast way of working but to be honest most stuff now I can track here I mean obviously I never do drums here mm. but uh, you know piano roads synths, bass, guitars, I, I do here, you know, um, but we've, we've, we've been in loads of studios, uh, I, I tend to just book a day in a studio, like, uh, you know, one of the Maloko studios, or um, Torag was a real eye-opener as well, because that was, uh, again, like you say, tape, you know, you just literally have to learn the song all the way through and, and play it, you know, that was a real uh, eye opener. You, you you need good musicians, you know, and I'm not one of those really. I I tend to I'm I'm a I'm a kind of Pro Tools musician really, you know. Um, so you know, we, all the piano I do a lot of piano stuff, and you know, we do bass stuff. But 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 yeah, when we were in Torag, actually, we were with my band, so that was great. You know, they were just they just really. Uh, on the ball, but it, it involved quite a lot of, you know, just writing stuff down, you know, at bar counting and stuff, it was, uh, you know, the old way really. I mean, you, you know, I think if, if you've been, if you've been, if you're a band, you know, it's not hard to play the song from start to finish, is it? But, but if you're songwriting in the studio, it's, you need to kind of write stuff down. Yeah. You can't just make a bit that big in Pro Tools and then make a bit that big and... I, I will always do, I will always use the same mic for an entire album, mm. you know, and, and so this album now is uh, C800 pretty much, uh, vo vocals, I don't mean everything else, I just mean vocals, um, so th yeah, th this album now is um, C800 um, but the I've kind of I've had a bit of a kind of because um, the Brauner I think's more it's a lot more or a bit more accurate I think than anything I've heard it's kind of tends to represent what's actually there but we've got the uh, the Manly Gold as well stereo that but we use that on the piano um, uh, yeah and so, so yeah just and, and I've also got um, a tubed. 87 as well you know the inner tube mod yeah. where you just basically just take everything out of the 87 and replace it with a tube it's amazing yeah it's um yeah um inner tube who do the the squeeze box which is really nice they're they're kind of just a really small company uh, in california i think mm -hmm. but they do this uh Oh, do you, you don't have to take that off, do you? Yeah. 
It's an 87 with a tube. I've mixed every song of the streets myself. Um, used to do it in Logic. Um, and we now do the mastering as well. So, uh, so it's kind of, yeah, the, everything, everything that you hear on a, on the Streets album is, was done in here. And, and what I like about doing the mastering is that, um, we master, it's, it's a little bit time consuming, but we master, um, in the mix, if you like. So we have, we've kind of spent uh, many, many hours deciding on, on our master chain that we like the best. Us, we kind of tend to start with it out, you know, with it in, without, out of the insert. But then, and then at a point, we just insert the mastering chain in. And, and yeah, mix, mix, into the mas mix into the mastering, if you like, yeah. Mm. The audio cube system is basically WaveLab. So uh, we have, I have the entire album loaded up into WaveLab, so you can A B it while you mix. And 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 um, and it's actually, I mean, um, it kind of sounds quite time-consuming, but actually, y you end up with a really even sound that that isn't hyped by EQ because you know you've not tried to like brighten up this track to so the, there's a, in terms of kind of like distortion there's actually there's very low distortion in in that in that way of working because because you're not uh using e EQ to compensate at all you're using EQ uh as an as a, a very delicate effect it's completely fluid you know a, a producer's role can be anything. I mean, I, you know, I know a lot of people in bands as well, and um, and that's kind of not changed in the slightest. You know, I mean, it's and we had no experience of that really. You know, until until we got to know bands really, because uh, you know, it's it's just not changed, has it? It's still there's an engineer, there's a producer, and there's a band. And a, and a room and, and you, you can't really uh, they've not bettered that really uh, so in that realm I guess you know you, you would say a producer is is that guy you know who who um, creatively administrates the the process but um, but the world that I come from you know uh, dance and, and maybe a little bit hip-hop as well is you know the producer makes the music you know the producer is the guy who is the writer and the, you know and then and then and with hip hop you'd you'd have a you know you'd have a rapper who would who would you know vocalize that and a, maybe a songwriter or something but but um so we kind of come from the world where as a producer you are you are everything you know you're the songwriter and and even the the player a lot of the time if you can't afford to get players. The way that we work and I'm sure a lot of people work really is you mix as you go along you know we're always the mix starts with the bass drum you know and the snare drum it's like you you mix that and then you record something else you know and you and, you, and there's, there's not this kind of like mix thing that's done at the end um, it's like in the same way as you know in the box really you, you're mixing all the time uh, and, and so I couldn't, I couldn't, I wouldn't want to lose a load of channels uh, to uh, to record through. I don't like um, I don't like having um, any any more than one sound on any, every fader. So in general, no, um, all of these, uh, apart from the vocals, which are a stereo bus, they're, they're the exception. But everything else is um, is you know that's a keyboard, that's a piano, that's maybe the guitars. We do a bit of that, maybe stereo guitars. Um, but often it will just be the left guitar and the right guitar, you know, two separate, and then panned on the desk. Um, yeah, I, I don't like um, summing stuff. But 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 then on the uh, the delay returns. 
that's pure summing you know that that'll be whatever's left over often um, and then of course you've got you've got, I've got the, we use the chandler a bit as well but uh, uh, I, I again you know the music's very minimal the music that I make and uh, and 24 is probably I mean like if, if this had 32 channels I honestly don't think I would need any more famous last words you know it was very very important to me that I had uh, a room that was you know completely dead you know uh, for vocals so, so that room is is the best best recording space I've ever had uh, and it's amazing the, the vocals are completely kind of American dead you know um, and and I love it, you know. And then and then um, and again, you know, if we're recording, um, I mean, even if you're recording guitars, I don't really mind. Uh, I've I've never minded where a guitar's been recorded, really. And the room always just gives it a bit of character, really. And it's, um, but the, I've always been obsessed with um, getting the, the deadest vocal sound possible. So so that that room, we took a lot of time over that. And in here, you know. We, we uh, I don't know we might get obsessed again about it but um, some of those mix rooms I find them a bit weird to, to mix in um, because I always it almost always feels like the sounds kind of inside my head you know and, and it, uh, I can't really get with it Maybe, you know, if that's what you're used to then fair enough but I've always mixed in like bedrooms and living rooms and stuff I you know I know this room I know these speakers uh, I, the, I mean, we've got the um, the the uh, the grey does as well, and they're they're fantastic. You know, I mean, I got, I've got a bit too into these for a while actually, and the mixes ended up sounding a bit um, a bit uh, kind of clunky and and kind of not, and and just you know, I think when if you're actually moving air, you. you what you tend to do with your drums is more subtle really you know you know because when because when a kick drum is actually moving the air you know it suddenly starts to feel a bit aggressive if that kick drum's too loud but so these are amazing for like EQing stuff but uh, but if you do a whole mix on these you'll end up your your um, percussives will you know stand out a bit a bit much I find I've um, never really been into loud mixing I, I, I think it just comes from from um, living in flats and stuff you know uh, never I've got no experience of really or no not any thorough experience of mixing in big studios but even when we're in a big studio I, I was I always tell the engineer to turn it down you know Flattering, isn't it? When you, yeah, when it's it flattering. Yeah, sounds, sound great. Yeah, and then you get it at home, and it's like it doesn't sound the same as it did on that huge Lockwood, you know, <laughs> tannery thing, you know. <laughs>